Hiya folks, we got something a little bit special for you today. Something very different. Yeah, so I Russia have uh, sent us this uh, electronic bike or electric bike. Because it makes your rides amazing. We'll get it out of the box first. Let's have a little look inside the box and see what's actually here. All, right, all I will say is, is that when you get this bike or if it's delivered to you, it's got to go this way up, obviously. It shows you which way to open the box. It's very heavy. It is a two-man job heavy. to carry this. And we've just taken the trouble of cutting the top off just so that we can look inside and uh, see what your first face with when you get one of these. I think it comes two-thirds created. You get a tool kit with it as well. So we have got a full set of um, Allen keys. Oh, that's good, isn't it? Because yeah. you usually just get like the ones that you need. Yeah, what else have we got there? We've got the throttle control. Now, this is, I think this type is illegal in the UK. It's a little thumb throttle, but they do supply it here anyway. You get a foot pump. You get a spanner. This is a 15 mil spanner there, open-ended and ring. You get the pedals to attach. You also get the charging block there, as you want to call it. So as you can see, you get a full assembly guide there. They reckon if you follow their instructions, you will have this assembled in 40 minutes. So just to make our life a little bit easier, folks, I've got a sharp blade here. I'm just going to cut through that cable tie down there. If you've got side cutters, you can do that. Do you want to pull that cable tie out now, Sharon? There you go. So that one's out of the way. You've got another one here. Yeah, I don't want to damage the powder coating. There we go. That one can come out as well. That means we should be able to lift the wheel out. There we go. Got it? Yeah, there you go, folks. So that just helps you a little bit with the, um, Ooh, lovely the unpackaging. Yeah, we've gone for the uh, orange model there. These are 20 inch wheels, folks, and they're also four inches wide. So as you can see, folks, all I've done there is cut the front of the box away. So that just enables us to pull the box down. And then it's a lot easier just to bring the box, the bike sideways then. And we can just take the box away. Let's move that forward a bit more, shall we? Just bring your bike back, folks. And there we go. So it should be freestanding because we've got that square box on the front. So that's it. Let's have a closer look at it. Right, so this is the bike as you get it. So as you can see, it's basically all assembled. The handlebars with the electronics and the wires and all that are just sitting down there. They will just need relocating into there. It has got an adjustable head yoke on there as well, which we can sort out afterwards. The seat raising and lowering it's for, from a five foot one person to a six foot two right okay so you've got quite a, a diverse height seat difference there to match oh, all just them over sort a foot of, haven't you to play just over a foot yeah so we have hydraulic brakes on this apparently disc yes. brakes front and back uh suspension independent suspension front and back front forks and rear wheel right brilliant okay we have Shimano gear, gears on this as well, folks. And as you can see, these lovely wheels here, they do come in various colours. We opted for the, um, orange. the orange colour. And it's You've got a, a nice step through, that's what I like. Yeah, it's a step through short. frame. So if you are short or if you well, uh, yeah, women have the step through frames, don't yeah, they? Yeah, it comes with this rack fitted. The seat is a lovely big padded seat on this as well, look. And although they say on the website the um, the range is 50 miles, that's probably the maximum range. I think the minimum range is about 20 to 25 miles. 25. That's if you're putting it full pelt, Sharon, with, uh, without the without pedalling. So again, that will depend on your terrain and whatever. So it's got a good range on it as well. So let's start unboxing this, taking the uh, packaging off and uh, start assembling it. Right, we're on to the first stage of the instructions now, folks, which involves undoing this 5mm bolt. There's another 5mm bolt on the uh, side there, which I've already undone with the uh, provided Allen keys they give us. And there's also one in the top of the yoke there as well. And that should allow us to rotate the... Make sure your steering is straight, your, your forks, because we're going to spin that round now to its correct position now. And once I've got that looking pretty much straight, which I think it is at the moment, if not, we can always adjust it afterwards. Then just tighten that up again. Just gonna nip that up and then just nip these two bolts back up again as well. Again, these hold the steering head. It's probably advisable before you actually do go on the road, like with any new bike, is literally just to go around all the nuts and bolts to make sure they are tight before you do actually go on the road. Because it has been known for some bolts to be left loose accidentally or they've, they've loosened in transit 
So just to be a bit prudent there, I think, folks. There we go, so I'm happy with that. And this has also got an adjustable head on here as well, which I think you need the six mil spanner. If you want to slightly raise that to a different angle, which I will do in this case, I'll just loosen that bolt off there. And as you can see, you can raise the angle. So I'm just going to have them just a bit raised up at the moment, just to make life a little bit easier. Just nip that up. There we go. Right, put that plug back in your um, gearing head driver. There we go. So we now need the four mil Allen key to put our handlebars in. These ones still have to come all the way out. Right, there we go. So we need to place these handlebars now the right way around. There we go, so that goes on like that. Cables need to be on the outside, folks, which they are there. So could be a little handy thing there, folks, for you. you can see on the um, outside of the knurled bit there, they give you a little crosshatch reference there in the middle of your steering head, so to speak, just to give you some sort of visual indication. So it could be a little bit tricky, this, folks, so it's probably best to have two people. Top and bottom, diagonally. Probably the easiest way to get these in. It should zoom in nice and easy. If there's any resistance there, you've got them cross-threaded. So just whack them in, diagonally first. Bit of a nuisance with them cables in the way, but uh, you'll get there. So we've got them in, but we haven't tightened them up yet. But as you can see, the benefit of, lift it back your way, of having that cross thing in the middle there, you can actually get it central with this little gap there, look. Just so you can line things up properly, so especially if you have someone to hold it, and then you can tighten them up. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do there. I'm happy with the position of that now, so I'll tighten these up. Right, so it does pay to do them in the cross pattern, because as you tighten them up and go round and go round again, you'll find they do loosen off a bit, so do tighten them up in the cross pattern, and then you'll, you'll get to the point where you don't wanna over tighten them, but just so that when you do lever on them, you know they're tight. Right, the seat post is actually already in the frame, folks, but uh, it does give you instructions on how to do that. So you literally just slacken it off and you can raise and lower the seat to your level. And then literally just push that clamp forward and that's it, as simple as that. If you need to put more resistance on that bolt, just sort of tighten that nut up a little bit. And then it gives you just a bit more resistance on that bolt there. As you can see how nice and tight that is now. So I'll leave that like that for the minute. Right, now it's time to turn the bike over. This is why they recommend, folks, that you have it on a soft surface so you don't scratch anything. So if we go, we're going over that way, Sharon. Are you going the opposite way? Yeah, well, I'm left hand, didn't I, really? So am I. <laughs> of course you are. So there we go, just gently put it down there like that. Okay, so that's that. In the way. So just be aware, folks, that you don't put too much pressure down on that because it's actually resting on the controller yeah, there. Yeah, put that on a bit of uh, this. We'll just slide that over the handlebar, just so that it sits on that, because uh, it could damage the gear lever. So if we just stick that under there like that, that's all right. Yeah, it's a bit rocky, but we'll, we're here watching it. Do you want to do something under the other end as well? Right, You'll what's the next bit? Here, put I the think. wheel on. Right, so we have got this uh, nut in here, folks. This is just a, a travel nut, I think. So I'm just going to take out this, uh, this transport nut, folks. Just undo these bolts here like that, there we go, and just loosen these off, there we go, like that, put it down there, we do have that little spindle thing in the wheel just to remove, there we go, and those are your two wheel nuts there which you just loosen off, and I'm just going to bring the wheel in and put the brake disc in there, just make sure they're undone enough, then that drops in, and literally we'll do them nuts up with a 15 mil supplied. Nip up your 15 mils either side. Not the best there folks to get that on there. So you might need the open-ended or maybe even a long reach socket on there. You'll probably be able to do it with this, but uh, as you can see, it don't fully sit on there correctly and you don't want to round your nuts off. So just something to be aware of. See, you don't want to, cause that slopes away that you don't quite get that on there and an open end is never a really good way to do it either so you might want a long reach socket on there all right so these are the pedals folks they have got left and right on them as you can see they're marked left and right and on the arms of the pedals as well you've got left and also the direction to tighten them up in as well these are foldable pedals as well folks by the way apparently we'll try that when we get on so easy to do tighten it in the way which it says so literally with the open-ended 15mm spanner supplied, literally just nip them pedals up. 
Again, you haven't got to go mad with them. There we go. And we'll do exactly the same to the pedal the other side. It has got a side stand there, which is already attached, folks, as you can see. Shimano gears, disc brakes. Looks like a lovely piece of kit. I suppose you better turn it around the right way. Okay, there we go, Sharon. It's all together. One thing we did do off camera, folks, was put the uh, rear uh, front mud guard on, sorry, and also the light. The light was on, but facing the other way. Now, this has got what you call pedal assist, Sharon. Okay, but for the UK market, mm -hmm. you're not really allowed to have this thing, which I've actually put on. This is the throttle, which you just push down, and that makes you go faster. So anyway, we're, we're just going to turn it on. Let's have a little look, first of all, at the battery. So this is where you remove the battery, folks. You have got a charging port down there, so if you pull that plug out down there, as you can probably see, there is a charging port for where you can actually charge it up on the bike. So just push that back in there. You do get two keys with it, and to remove the battery, all you do, you put the key in, turn it halfway, and it clicks forward, and then it goes back on itself, click it again, and then you can pull it right out and take the battery, and as you can see there, charge it indoors as well. You've got a little indicator on there to show you the state of the battery. Yeah, we've got a green light there. So that's fine. So just plonk the battery back in again, like that. And then just sort of turn the key. It drops the battery and just push the battery home. And then that's it, the battery is actually installed. So how do we turn this little display on? Underneath here, there is a rubber switch. So you just hold it on and your display will come on. And as you can see, we've got a an LCD display there, displaying 69% uh, battery life. That's how it comes charged. We're in eco mode at the moment. We'll just keep it on eco mode number one. That'll be the most beneficial to the battery. And then you've got your gears here, which you just literally move up the gearbox like that, just like a normal bike, and then press that one to move back down the gearbox. Anyway, so 69% battery life. We've got the speed in kilometers per hour. If you want to change that, you can get into the menu by holding both of these up and down buttons in. And then you're in the display setting menu then. You can press the button to go to advanced settings or display settings. And the one underneath, I think, takes you into that. We've got wheel size settings, speed limiting settings. Uh, we're going to change, hopefully, the display units here we go so let's just go into them for example we want to change from kilometers to miles an hour so i've done that don't forget to to go into a menu press the under button that's the okay button and as you can see the top speed on this model is 31 miles an hour which uh, is quite a lot so as i say i'm just toggling through the the settings there background lighting display unit auto off setting what is the auto off time on this 10 minutes so if the bike's inactive for 10 minutes then it will just turn the uh I suppose you can the controller that, off can you, you can adjust down. it up and down yeah so we won't do that for the moment so let's come out of that one and just go forward again see what else we got there battery display mode well i'm happy with the way that it's displayed and that's it so we can come out of that menu and you've also got advanced setting i'm not too sure what that is let's have a look in there i don't know what pas range is i'm not sure folks speed magnetic number i don't know what that is zero start setting power sensitivity start strength setting but again you can that you can go through them and have a look yourself folks just keep your finger on it underneath and that takes you straight back to where you was so now we're on miles per hour i'm on power assist one i think it's time i had a little go baby yeah Right folks, I'm out at the moment on my first test drive. I haven't charged it up. I don't know how much of this you're gonna be able to see. Pedal assist is actually on. So I'm just gonna set myself off. 
by pedalling and straight away I can feel the pedal assist I'm not using that throttle at the moment and then like a normal bike I'm going up the gearbox now and without any effort at all I'm doing about 11-12 miles an hour at the moment and it's very easy that's on eco mode where I've got a bit of the pedal being assisted by the bike itself so if I just I can go up to normal there and straight away I've, I can feel the bike doing a lot of the work itself without me needing the pedal so the pedal assist is the normal mode you would have without having this throttle attached but if you want to obviously use that it's illegal in the UK then obviously I'll stop pedaling and then just go operate off of the uh, lever itself let's go to power on power mode pedal assist 5 we should be on full throttle which is taking me up to 15 miles an hour at the moment on full speed suspensions working very well again these are hydraulic disc brakes on this so um, very nice to operate let's come to a standstill just dropping down now to the lower gears nice to pull away pretty smartly with that throttle folks and it gets up to the 15 miles an hour pretty fast there is a way to de-restrict these but um, I'm not obviously doing that here at the moment that's not what this video is about it does have lights on this and also a little horn as well nice little bib yeah wing mirrors would be a handy addition folks as long as you're turning your pedals you're on pedal assist now on the high mode it really does pick up quick. You've only got to turn the pedals and, and the, the pedal assist kicks in. And as you can see, it zooms up to over 15 miles an hour in no time. Now just go up the gearbox a bit. So you really don't need that lever at all. Here we go. Got a bit of competition here now, look. I showed him. I showed him. So again, I'm barely pedalling, folks. But you keep the pedals moving to keep the pedal assist working. So you're getting a bit of a workout as well. There we go. Hydraulic brakes, great things. So even on a slight incline, what I'm on here, I'm not even pedalling hard at all. So that's the beauty of it, that you can get exercise while still having the pedal assist. And if you've got poor joints, you're getting mild exercise on your joints without any impact. You're getting a cardiovascular workout even though you've got an electric bike, how about that? And there we go so there you go folks that's the uh Sire Russia Komoda what do I think about it well I've not driven an electric bike before but um this is my first experience very very easy to ride very tactile very user friendly nice over bumpy terrain as well as uh, the smooth road as well the pedal assist you can actually change on the fly as you're going along so if you do come to some sort of hill just whack it up to full power and as long as you keep pedaling, you've only got to move your legs, you haven't got to put any pressure into it, the pedal assist takes over and pulls you up them hills, no problem whatsoever. The range obviously will depend on the, the climate or how much you use the pedal assist, so they reckon between sort of 25 to 50 miles range. The uh, eco mode is your best bet for the battery, especially around where I live, it's a uh, flat terrain most of the time, but uh, you can always, I say, just a little click up on the um, the up button, for example, and that will take you up the power scale as well for making it easier to pedal. I haven't done any setting up, so to speak. You've got adjustments on the, uh, the front dampers there as well. So you've got full front and rear suspension. The display is easy to read. The gears are easy to shift up and down. So again, you have lights front and rear and the lights at the rear are actually brake lights they're not indicators they are brake lights as soon as you turn the lights on 
you get the uh, brake light comes on whenever you pull the lever in and brake. Hydraulic brakes, you shouldn't need to touch them, although there is an adjuster on there for the, uh, the little bit of uh, adjustment you got on the actual handlebars there as well. And as I say, it's, it's a treat to ride. The gears work straight out of the box, no problems whatsoever. Assembly was pretty straightforward and um, yeah, it's fun to recommend. I will leave a link in the uh, description below the video. It's a lovely bike to ride and also when you're going along in it, as I say, it handles all terrains pretty well. I've been down the bumpy roads and stuff like that and uh, I'm well pleased with it. Anyway, thanks very much. I'll see you in the next video and until then, bye for now.